live from Puerto Rico. Welcome, everybody. This is Spirit Matters. I'm Dal Grunga, along with Kishore Chandra and our very good friend, soul brother, community leader, Ayurveda specialist, life coach, hug master, and everything in between and beyond, Veer Bhadra, down in Florida or up in Florida, depending where we are. So glad you're here with us, Veer. How you doing? Grateful. Grateful to be with you guys. Yeah, it just feels like uh, feels like home. Seeing Achutan here, seeing you guys, and Diana, of course, because she's in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, yeah, it feels like home seeing my wife in the other room. Yes, that's that's normal. We're, we're gonna give you guys a panorama shot for those tuning in on on Zoom or what YouTube. This is this is the panorama. Rooksy wants to be in our panorama over there. This is our this is, we're in the, we're in the rainforest of Puerto Rico. Mm. Our good friend Rukmini is over there, and uh, we're here. We're, we somehow we've got Wi-Fi in the middle of the rainforest. It's the the nature of the world. Mm -hmm. So we were in this uh, beautiful retreat center, Veer, and we were just thinking about how you are such a healer. You're such a healer in your own right, and you've always had visions to build retreat centers, and you lead retreats, and you've been on a path of personal healing as well as just kind of being a healer for other people and i was just thinking about that and appreciate all the the loving healing work that you do in the world and uh maybe you just want to start off and share just some of your own reflections about retreats and unplugging and creating time and it's something that you also do so well and i've been in some of your workshops is like value-based living um, and taking time out to reflect on what's important for us. And that's, that's a little bit what we've been doing here, the, the purpose of it. You know, we haven't really been doing that because we've been working behind the scenes, um, but we're telling other people to do it on the retreat. Um, but, uh, and so maybe it, just like, just the importance of taking time out and reflecting on what's important to us. I think that's something that you've always been so good at and something that you always work on and encourage other people to do. And, Maybe we just hear a few of your thoughts and reflections on that to get us going. Does that sound like a good idea? Awesome. Well, just, just first off, thank you guys for the service that you're doing. Because, you know, it, there's always a facilitator. And we can be in a process with our groups. You know, you guys have been leading retreats for a long time, too. And we can be in process with our groups. But also, there's a need to, to hold space as well. That's, that's such an, a vital role so that other people can fully be in their experience and they don't have to think about the details and logistics They can really be in their their creative brain they can be in their um a much more surrendered state and so yeah thank you guys for doing that for doing that for for years for doing that for me also so many times i've had space space held by both of you and yeah. um super grateful for that thank you that's the tagline on our retreats puerto rico rainforest retreat we feel the stress so that you don't have to <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, I'm not the space holder. I'm the chef. I'm, I've been catering it with Rasika and I. I've got banana nut muffins in the oven right now. I got to leave in 20 minutes. Okay. All right. We got to make this quick. Yeah. Before they well, burn. I got, a, I got a timer on my phone. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Um, well, yeah. I mean, that's just, that just goes to show. I mean, you, you're, that's you. That's you, Doyle and, and Kishore. I think in, in you know, your, your own individual unique ways. You guys are always holding space. You're always serving. And and I think that, you know, when it comes down to taking time to be really intentional and vision our life, that's, that's really what it is. It's, it's seva, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes like the, the end of this year, I, I, I love doing vision casting and, and reflecting on my life and just seeing like, what is, what's Krishna been teaching me throughout this last year? What are like the main themes of my life that have been emerging and, and to what degree am I paying attention to those and actually letting those become meditations, which Achuta, you, you do so, so awesomely and, and express so awesomely. And uh, it's a seva. Like so often I've thought of vision because, you know, I have so many desires in my life. And I've thought of vision as just kind of like this selfish thing of like me gratifying my desires in life and fulfilling my needs and wants and whatnot. But I'm seeing more and more as time goes on. You know, there's the blank canvas approach where it's like, hey, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to paint whatever I want. I'm going to experience whatever I want in this world. And, and that doesn't really attract me. You know, it's like the, the approach that's laid out in, in, in the Vedas where we're diamonds. Every one of us are these unique, rare, uncomparable gem of spirit souls. 
that have unique visions and have unique spadharmas. We're, we're meant to live a certain vision in this life in service to God. Like that's what vision casting is for me. And so mm. it's, it's much more of a revelatory process and a, 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 a prayerful process and just like, just genuinely trying to connect to what is in my heart and, and really trusting and, and having faith that it's not me just coming up with a bunch of stuff. It's, it's, I'm trying my best to connect with God's voice, with God's vision for me in my life and to, to live in alignment with that will. And, 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 and in that way, like, man, it's so satisfying to put images together and affirmations and, and look at a vision board and say, hey, like, my Lord, like, I'm just trying to connect to your will. And this is the best that I can do. And, and you know, let, let whatever it is that's going to unfold in my life, you know, let me see it as your will. Let me see it as your will. Mm. That's so rich. I got a lot coming to mind. You want to say something, Lucky Shore? I always got to defer to other people, otherwise I dominate. <laughs> and I just sit quietly and wait and listen. <laughs> Waits for Doyle to say, do you have anything to say, Kishore? He's like, I have for a while. Thank you. Vera, I was just going to say that I really wanted to ask you, like, I mean, I, 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 I'm wondering, like, about your, your process and how you prepare, I guess, for these kinds of things, because I think we all know this as people who hold space and people who facilitate space for others and people who lead retreats um, like this. But I always really thought this about you and I've let you know this person like you're just so good at it. You know, you're just so you hold space so well and it's very genuine and it's very deep, you know, the way that you hold space for others. And sometimes when I have time in my crazy days, I'm able to tune into your morning prayers that you do on on Instagram and they're so powerful and I and I'm always thinking to myself I'm like where like where is that how how is he doing it where is he connecting to you know and and, and what what is he doing and and I I something that I've always really admired about you is that even you know New York is a crazy city that so many of us live in and have lived in and like this and I feel like even when you were there in New York like you were just so steady with that connection to Krishna. And I'm wondering, you know, I, I remember I took this uh, teacher training, this Ayurveda counselor training with you and Diana. And it was so wonderful, you know, because you're bringing all of these techniques and all of these beautiful books and all of these uh, teachings that you shared a little bit with, with, with us, with the group about, and I, I just remember like all these acronyms like WEG and like sitting in your seat and being fully attentive to people and like, rolling your shoulders back and looking at people in their eye. And it's just like these little things that you do. And I just wanted to, to pick apart a little bit about your process of how, how you hold space for people, because I think the way that you do it is really, really special. Thanks, Kishore. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really, I think um, I've had a lot of space held for me in my life, a lot of space held for me. And, and I've, I've been, you know, if I look at my earlier years, then, you know, been really selfish and kind of like hogged the space and needed the space held for me and, and wasn't as much of a, you know, wasn't really looking for the opportunities to hold space for others. And, and I think, you know, having that, that transformative effect of, of somebody really, and I, I, you know, I look at my brother and I look at my godfather and I look at certain friends in my life and I look at my my guru, Sri Radhana Swami, and I look at different individuals who, who have held a lot of space for me, coaches and, and, and teachers. And Doyal, how many walks have we gone on through New York City where there's, a, there, there's a, a huge bubble around us, there's millions of people, but there's this amazing intimate space being held. And so I think that, you know, by having a lot of space held for me, then it's, it just, it feels so good. It feels so good to feel God's, what I experience is God's love through other humans, human beings like this unconditional acceptance and like, hey, dude, whatever's going on, whatever emotions you're feeling, whatever's going through your mind, like, it's all good. Like, just express it. I'm here. I'm not judging you. You know, like, I, I, it's safe. Like, it's safe for you to just go through whatever's going on inside. Um, it feels so good. And, and it's, it's so powerful and so transformative. I've, ex I've experienced that so many times. That I think it's just, an, it's naturally become an increased desire within my own heart to to hold that space for others and, and to, to be that. And so I think that's what's, that's what's initiated it. And, and then, you know, what's kind of at the baseline of me 
um, wanting to do that effectively is really that intention. It's like, you know, my son, man, my son today, whoa, like, like hold space. Like, man, he's the most challenging person that I've ever come across to hold space for, you know, like, like, dude, like what is going on? Like you're like my, my hardwiring is getting twisted up. My emotions are flipping upside down. Like you're, you're having a thing right now. And like, this is challenging. Like it is really challenging for me to not want to just yell, right? Like lose my mind. And so, yeah, so it's, it's a constant intention. And then, and then to be able to reflect back on it, not, not beat myself up about it if I, if I miss an opportunity for love and for connection, but just to reflect back on it and say, man, I want to be better. I want to be centered. I want to feel all my emotions and, and be, be there to feel other people's emotions and just hold that loving space, try to be an mm-hmm. instrument of, of, of God's love in their life. And not to hog the space Doyle, but I'm just going to, I'm going to hog the space today a little bit. That's okay. But Martha, she just wrote the wisdom of unconditional love and acceptance. And what you were speaking about, Vera, this idea of just, yeah, just not judging of, of just holding space and, 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 and being loving, even when someone's going through something really difficult. And I think, you know, this Vera, but like, I, um, personally, I, I feel like I owe so much of my Krishna consciousness to you, Vera, because I met the devotees when I was 21 years old, actually, in, in India. And I kept on meeting, meeting the devotees at, at various times in my life. And it wasn't really until I met the Bhakti Center and the devotees at the Bhakti Center, and specifically, Vera, you were one of the first ones that I met that I just felt this huge wave of just non judgment, you know, unconditional acceptance and love for whatever we're going through. And, you know, we were talking about this with Achuta a few days ago, that sometimes this idea of, of surrender or this idea of being spiritual, like it looks a certain way, or like we create these, these frameworks of what it means to be spiritual. And even in our own spiritual tradition, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of like cookie cutter, this is what it means to be a devotee, this is what it looks like to be a devotee, et cetera. And I feel like what you do, Vera, and you know, your legacy at the Bhakti Center is still so strong because you've created this mood of just absolute, that's the baseline, just unconditional love. And we accept you wherever you're at. And I think that for devotees, that's, um, that's kind of revolutionary in a way, you know, it's like, I feel like that's very much in the philosophy, but sometimes that gets lost along the way. And I feel like you're just so expert at like, no, like go through what you're going through, feel your emotions, be where you're at in life you know, and and that's it. And I just, I think it's so special, you know, whenever I tell people about the Bhakti Center and that like, that's the mood at the Bhakti Center, people are always really blown away by that. You know, they're just like, really? I can just go there and not be judged. I was like, yes, you can come and we'll accept you. We love you no matter what. And I think that that's really attributed to you mostly, Vera. Thanks for your love, Kishore. Thanks for your love. I'm, I'm trying my best. I can't help it. I literally, I feel like Radhana Swami's presence in my body as you're mm-hmm. talking right now. Like it's, it's, it's like unavoidable. Like that's, you know, I, when I came to the Bhakti Center, I was in the same boat. I still had a social life. I still had habits. I moved into a nice apartment that was, you know, an expensive rent. I was like, man, this is a deal. You know, I wasn't going there to be like, I'm a monk. I'm going to serve the mission. I was still, man, I was, I was in New York city, social life and, and nightlife and and still had habits and whatnot. And, and I, was, I was embraced and accepted by, uh, by the devotees at the Bhakti Center, by a beautiful community. And shortly after, you know, Radhana Swami, who then I could see, you know, like the time that we spent together, which we, we got, a, a, I was super fortunate, my whole family super fortunate to get a lot of time with him, um, that I could see that that's been him his whole life. I remember, you know, growing up in the Hare Krishna movement, we would have these, these reunions of the kids that went to school growing up in the Hare Krishna movement and we would meet together in Los Angeles or in Florida or in, you know, West Virginia. And we, and we would basically just have, you know, the most epic parties of all time, you know, and, and, uh, and Radhana Swami would just show up at these events. Radhana Swami would show up at these massive parties, you know, and people were, were getting high and we're drinking and it's just, it's a very loose environment. And he was just, there was no judgment. There was zero judgment. I remember him embracing my brother, super hungover. And that embrace literally like my brother after that, he was like, I will never drink again in my life. You know, <laughs> Like that was the power of his loving, unconditional acceptance, you know? And, uh, and so I, I remember seeing that I, I saw it in retrospect. I, I wasn't, you know, I was a little cautious, the Swami at the parties, you know, 
But I saw it in retrospect when we spent time with this person that, man, he does not want anything from us. He just wants to see us happy. He wants mm-hmm. to see us awaken to the happiness of our souls. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's it. he's given me that instruction so many times, especially early on in our relationship. He said, any way I can serve you. I love you so much. You're, you're such an inspiration. What can I do? What can I do? And he's like, he's like you can serve me by just, by just being happy. You know, and it's like that genuine well-wisher that, that doesn't want anything back other than just to see us happy. And, and I could see that with, with, uh, with Radhana Swami. And then it even, it magnified it, it even more for me, for Srila Prabhupada. And the experience that was had by those early disciples in 26 Second Avenue coming in off LSD trips, like on another planet. I don't know if our acceptance level at the Bhakti Center is at the level, even anywhere near the acceptance level that Srila Prabhupada had. He was on another level. People coming in, still coming off their trips and accepting their service and loving them and feeding them, just like a loving, loving father, loving mother. Yeah. Veer, Veer was wary of the Swami at the parties that maybe had a body cam on his robes. He was walking around <laughs> taking, taking footage. <laughs> Yeah. Vera went, that's, that's dovetailing our propensity, went from re- party planner to retreat space holder. <laughs> I, uh, um, and, and, I, and, I, and, and I had a question that I've been wanting to ask, and thank you for sharing all that beautiful, inspiring, um, all of that beautiful, inspiring stuff, Vera. Um, and, you know, you mentioned like discovering the vision for our life rather than just like a blank canvas, like I can be whatever I want. Like I love how, you know, uh, our friend Jay Shetty, he mentions at times that you can't be every anything you want, but you can be everything that you are, you know, that, 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 that quote came to my mind. And also like, as you've said so many times to me personally, while you were living in New York and you're echoing here today is that, you know, it's, it's this belief that God's will is constantly unfolding in my life. And that all I have to do is just learn to see that, learn to see how God's will is unfolding in my life and the vision for my life is sort of you know meant for me to to discover like what god has planned for me and so my question is how do we you know because it's i think sometimes it's just it's hard to discover that and it's hard to know like what is god's voice in my life saying do this and what is just like my mind or like what's up like what's like what's my belly like god is telling me to eat that cheesecake that's the vision of my life for the next five minutes, yeah. you know, or like what it's telling me, you know, to forgive or it's telling me to hold the grudge or it's telling me to not let this person back into my life or, or, or it's telling me to like, you know, I should become a teacher and a healer. And, and sometimes we move in that direction, but just things aren't working out. And it's like, is this just not, is this me? Not, am I pushing something that's actually not divinely arranged for me or like, how do people know? How do you know? How do you navigate that constant, um, yeah, knowing of, did I discover the vision of my life or is this just another, you know, mind trap, you know? Totally. Person? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful question. And I think it's kind of, it comes down to the essence, right? It comes down to the essence of, of our life and, and wanting to, wanting to feel that alignment, wanting to feel that alignment with, with God's, but wanting, just wanting to feel alignment with that every moment in our life has tremendous meaning. And, and so like, I'm, I'm hearing that, it's like, I'm hearing that yearning. Like I hear the yearning of your soul and I feel like it's a universal yearning of like, my life has meaning, like this moment has meaning and that's being connected to that, not being stuck on the superficial and, and how to get there. I mean, I'm, I'm in the process of that for sure. I'm fully in the process of that. I don't, I don't, hear God speaking to me every moment of my life and feel complete alignment with God's will in every moment of my life. I'm not, not at that stage. I'm far from it, but I I know I'm moving closer and closer to it. There's no question about that. If I look back on my life, things are becoming a lot more simple inside, you know, like the, the recentering process is becoming a lot more simple and, and it's, it's just not in the mind. I mean, you know, my friend, our friend, our dear friend, Ganesham, many of us know, um, you know, he, he's, he, we're reminding each other constantly. We have a, a men's group down here. Doubt the mind. Doubt the mind. If, if, if we're starting anything in our life from the platform of our mind, then we're starting on the wrong foundation. We're meant to start with prayer. We're meant to start with open up a spiritual textbook, look back and, and meditate on our teachers that have given us such timeless truth and wisdom to, to be the center of our life. 
If we're starting with the foundation of our mind, anything in our life, moment to moment, if we're starting with a thought, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to do this, or this is good, or this is bad. We're so conditioned. We're so conditioned. We're subject to make mistakes. We're subject to make, to be illusion. That, that's, that's a tent. That is, that is the, um, what do you call it? The, that's the nature of being human. Mm. That's our reality. We're all in it. And so if we're, if we're starting from that mental plane, then, then we're, we're starting on the wrong foot. And so I think, you know, to start our days with, with our meditation and with our, our sacred study and with our prayer, to start every day with that. And ideally to start every moment with that before any endeavor, before any conversation, before any decision that's being made, we're going back to our teachers. We're going back to the sacred teachings that have guided us. We're going back to our friends that have guided us. We're going back to our, our prayer and our meditation. Even if it's for one, two, three seconds, that's the foundation. And then everything from there becomes auspicious and everything from there becomes more and more. Um, we feel that alignment, we feel that genuine alignment with, with a higher power. I, I love that. And what, what I'm hearing is that it really requires a lot of presence and that like what, to feel in my body, like, where is this coming from? And if I'm just like feeling heady, feeling unsure, feeling forceful in some way, and it's like, okay, I'm just in my mind and like good decisions never come from that place. But it's like, if I take the moment, even I don't even know, it's like, okay, do something spiritual for a moment, whether it's some prayer or some, some reading of sacred literature and like ground myself, recenter myself. And it's like, it's the quiet, grounded voice from within rather than that, that rush, scattered chatter of the mind. And it's just learning to, to denote those things. Yeah, Doyle, you, yeah, you're, you're summing it up beautifully. And, and, and whether, it's, whether it's positive or negative, sometimes the mind's like, whoa, this is amazing, this is amazing, <laughs> this is amazing. It's like, I don't know if this is amazing. Like, I'm just speculating <laughs> like crazy, you know? I have no idea if this is amazing. <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> I have no idea. That's what I'm going to do with the rest of the treat on this retreat. Realize, how's it going? I have no idea. <laughs> this feels amazing, but I don't really know if it's amazing. This could all just be my mind. <laughs> right. We don't well, really know. Yeah. Well, and we do like, like, yes, absolutely to that for sure. And we, and we should, we should laugh about it. Like we get to the point where it's like, oh my God, like we could laugh at ourselves with how much we speculate. Oh how much we, we rely on our mind and think that our mind knows everything and we know what's good and we know what's bad. It's a joke. We're so small in our perception from the mind, from the mind space, from the soul space. That's a completely different picture from the soul space. Everything is perfect and complete. Yeah. Did you want to say something, Kishore? Or the, otherwise I was, I'm just going to let you know, I'm going to invite Achuta. You're going to get a closing word in here. So just FYI, kishore has got something to say, then we're calling on you. I'll, I'll keep it short because I want to hear mostly from Achyuta and not so much myself. But I was, I was just thinking this morning, Jai Jagannath was giving class and he said something so beautiful um, and funny. I hadn't heard it in this way before, but this idea of being trapped in the mind and, you know, what we think is amazing, right? Many of us have heard of this word of Maya or illusion or delusion, right? We're just, we're just buying into the false reality, right? And so Jai Jagannath was saying that a lot of times there is this misunderstanding that Maya, Devi, is like the devil or it's something, you know, evil or like this, but actually Maya Devi is worshipable, right? She's a goddess. And the reason that we're worshiping her is because in many ways he was saying like she's like the bouncer, she's the gatekeeper, because for us to really ascend into like that highest possibility, right, to, for us to ascend into the spiritual realm, right, our highest selves, we have to like take care of all our crazy business here. We have to take care of this crazy mind and all of the things that we think are amazing, but not necessarily amazing. We have to, we have to deal with that here. So in many ways, Maya Devi is like the bouncer, like keeping us out because th that what we're going through here is not meant for there. And so that just came up to my mind when both of you were speaking about this, you know, how the mind just plays tricks on us and how we think we're just, we're killing it. We're doing the best that we can and all this stuff and et cetera. But actually we might be quite lost. I know I've been in those spaces, but I want to hear from Achuta. I want to hear from Achuta. I just, I got a, one more Jai Jagannath ism about the mind. Cause I, th I thought maybe you were going to bring this up, but he says that spending too much time in the mind is like taking a long walk in a bad neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. Uh, Achuta, we want to, you're here. We want to hear your voice a little bit. Just say something as we, before we close out. 
Well, just before Achuta speaks, then I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll speak something to Achuta also because we, we all got to speak something to. When when we're talking about when we're talking about divine goddesses, then we're we're we're, we're seeing a living goddess in my estimation, my vision, a glowing figure of uh, of an instrument of of the divine goddess Sri Radha and mm. Sri Govinda, and so super grateful grateful for the presence of a living sage. That's all. All right. No pressure, Chuta, but we're expecting something deep. (laughs) (laughs) uh, My question was actually your question, Doyle, like, you know, differentiating between, yeah, I've I've, I've become really aligned with this, this divine intention for my life. But when is it actually just kind of like my mind? And I really think that that was such a beautiful answer, Vera. I mean, you know, Vera and I, we kind of, we have birthdays one day apart. So I always kind of feel like I'm like, see, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the power mm-hmm. of the Taurus. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I, I felt that answer of like really anchoring ourselves in, in our, our spiritual textbooks. Like you said, we have, we have resources, like use the resources. Um, I really think that Vera is a person when, I, I really started getting like really deep with Vera. Uh, it kind of reminded me like, okay, what would it look like if you just dove into it? We're l- like full on, don't, don't care what it looks like. Don't like outside, don't care what the rest of the world thinks about it. Just like, what if you really took a deep internal journey and just let that, let that happen? What if you just allowed yourself to go on that trip and see what happens? And um, I feel like Vera is such an example of what happens when you just allow yourself to go on that spiritual journey and allow it to transform you and allow it to transform everybody else around you with the faith that in going on this spiritual journey it'll naturally uplift everybody else like i don't have to worry about oh my god what am i leaving behind who am i leaving behind the people who are meant to be uplifted will be uplifted like we spoke about last week but um i'm super super grateful for this this sangha uh, being able to hear from like my, you know, contemporaries, my friends, and really getting like awesome messages, like, mm, that was that was deep. That's what I needed to hear today. Um, I often feel like one of the best ways that we can connect with people, especially people who like don't look like us or whatever, you know, when you think about racial outreach and all these things, one of the best ways is to really like go give somebody half an hour and hear a lecture from them. And in a really submissive attitude, like, really, what can I deeply get out of this? And so I feel like that was uh, practiced today. I really feel like um, it's been a while since I've gotten to be able to just sit and kind of bathe in your intellect, Vera. So I'm really glad it, it happened. Oh, man. Mm. Super grateful. Super grateful for you, Chuta. And, and yeah, I, when I flash back on our life and our experiences together, you've just always been like a radiant beam of sunshine in my life always encouraging always accepting always loving always inspiring so personally i appreciate that and also that point the point of we're in a space holding specific, uh, position in our life whatever that may be like to keep listening to our keep hearing from our friends that have such deep wisdom and that are they're literally backpacking with us on the journey and just they just know they have little insights and little things so i'm, I'm taking that insight of of sangha i'm taking that insight of sangha and of mm-hmm. hearing Hearing from those people, even like, you know, maybe they're not the Radhana Swamis or the big gurus or the, the big person. Let's hear from them. Absolutely. Like, let that be the, the focus. But also like, let's, let's hear from the street sweeper. Let's hear from the maid. Let's hear from, let's hear from our friends deeply and, and learn and grow from that, that message of God that comes through them. Love it. Beautiful. I got so much more to say, but we are done with time just for today. We keep it short and sweet and hankering for more. Before we close out, we got our, our friend and scribe, Kimberly. We got some takeaways. If anybody's got some takeaways, they can write them in the chat. Otherwise, Kimberly's got a few takeaways for us always. What do we got on tap, Kimberly? All right. So today we got we're unique gems with unique dharma in service to God. Holding space is constant intention the power of loving unconditional acceptance and the importance of grounding and recentering myself in spiritual resources. Beautiful. That was a big one for me. Use your spiritual resources at the end. Um, before we close out, any closing words, Vera or Kishore? You guys, anything you want to say before we finish for today? 
just want to say I love you, Vera. You're awesome. <laughs> Super grateful to, to be with you guys in service, to be with everybody in service. And, and yeah, just I'm humbled and honored anytime I get invited anywhere and, and uh, get to hang out with my friends, and get to share from my heart. So thank you. Love you. Love you so much, Vera. Love you, Chuta. Love all those tuning in live. Love those of you listening to the recording. So, so glad you're with us. We are paused for tomorrow. No show conversation tomorrow, Tuesday, Jan 11th, but we'll be picking it back up on Wednesday, January 12th. Vera is going to be joining us again. So please tune in. Same time, same place here in Puerto Rico. <laughs> Love you guys all so much. Have a great, great rest of your day, evening, wherever you're tuning in from. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.